Dr. Ken here with you again. This is AC Practical 16.3 three phase star delta connected transformer. So, again, to do this practice, don't forget to fill out your hazard identification, the supervision level that will be required, the level of risk, high, low, medium, etc., and what you're going to do to control those measures. Here's our circuit diagram. It may look a little complicated to start with, but it's uh, it's not that bad. I'll just turn on my my pen, and uh, this is the uh, primary side of our transformer. I'll just call it prime, and the primary side has three windings. It has a winding for A phase, a winding for B phase. And of course, a winding for C phase. And you can see here we've got an AO and an A1. In other words, a start and a finish, a start and a finish, and a start and a finish. Again, very important to get your starts and finishes. Correct, in this particular case, all the finishes have been connected together to create a star point. And as long as the load going out the other side is balanced, you won't need to take that star point back to the neutral on your supply. But if that was something that needed to happen, that point there could go back to the neutral. Then we have our three supplies, line one onto A phase, in our case it's 42 volts, again B phase and finally C phase at 42 volts. So that takes care of the primary side of the transformer and our primary is connected as a star. If we now look at the secondary of the transformer, so here's our secondaries. I'll just call that SEC for secondary. And if you remember the last time we played with this particular transformer, there was a ratio of 4 to 1. So, approximately speaking, if I was to put my 40 odd volts in here as a line voltage, I should get something in the order of about 10 volts out. And again, our secondaries are labelled A, B, and C, which you'll notice they've used lowercase now. And then, obviously, our AOs, again, are the starts and the ones are the finishes. Now, if you, uh, if you look at uh, this particular drawing very carefully on this side, the transformer is connected in delta. So if we start with the A phase, you'll notice that our finish is connected to the start of B phase. So we'll start there, connected to there. There's our first link. Then the finish of B phase is connected to the start of C phase. And then finally, our finish on our C phase is then connected all the way back, of course, along here until it comes back to the start of A phase. So, our transformer on the Output side or secondary side is a delta shaped winding. Then finally, we have our load. You can see here our load is three lamps. One side of each of those lamps has been connected together. Therefore, the lamps themselves, as a load, are connected in star. 
So we have star, delta, star in this particular case. We're going to be measuring the uh, voltages across our lamps. And we're going to be measuring the voltage coming in on the primary. So the volts primary and the volts secondary. So here's our actual setup. And you can see here's our three phase supply. So that's our supply. We have a transformer that has one, two, three windings, giving us A, B, and C. And then they'll be brought up to the plate here. So we have A phase. B phase and C phase on the plate. Simply taken the start of each of the primary windings and connected them together here and looped them all together into a star point. So here's our star point. Star point there. And then each of our phases a phase back to the supply, B phase back to the supply, and C phase back to the supply, giving us on our primary side, again, a star configuration. On the secondary side, you can see that the end of the A phase has been looped around and connected to the finish on the B phase and then the B phase finish looped around onto the C phase and then the C phase here looped all the way back around and onto the A phase. So at this end we end up with a delta connection and then finally our load up here and again we've simply looped all our neutrals together and then taken a supply and you can see A goes to one side blue goes to the second and the red phase loops to the third place in the delta. So our load ends up being a star. So we're going in star, then to delta, then back to star with our load and that's all very okay. Everything will stay balanced. Everything will work quite well. So the next thing we do is we power up. You can see we've turned the power on to our transformer. And we've got a primary voltage line of 44 odd volts. You can see a little lights on up here telling us our supply is on and our secondary voltage as we anticipated would be something for like 4 to 1 so there's a 4 to 1 ratio here between the primary and the secondary so you can see um, very close voltages 10.34 10.71 and 10.66 all the voltages around our star delta star have stayed nice and even and uh, well in control as it were in this slide um, I've reversed one of the primary windings just to demonstrate winding reversal again. 
So even though um, this is a star winding, I've actually taken one of the windings and spun it around. Made a start, a finish, and a finish, a start. Which you may be able to see here. I've pulled the, the star point. Now goes to this terminal. And my supply goes to this one at the back. So effectively I have reversed the just one phase on the blue. Then we've powered up again. And you'll notice that it um, hasn't affected the input voltage. But the output voltages have changed dramatically. So uh, we have one phase, you see three lamps, if one's uh, dull, so we've got dull, uh, bright, and bright, and uh, much higher voltages around those, and lower voltages around the dull. So again, by reversing a winding, Normally our voltages would sit in a phaser diagram that looks like this. And effectively I've taken one of those and I've put it out here instead by reversing one of the windings. And all of a sudden I've got 60 and 60 in here. And I'm going to end up with these weird voltages out here. So I end up with some very strange voltages on my phaser diagram. So again, got to be careful that we don't get winding reversal, that we keep our starts and our finishes of our windings following exactly the right pattern, or we can end up with some disasters. So uh, the advantage of a star delta connection uh, through a transformer, of course, you're going to get 100% capacity out of your transformer, unlike the open delta, which only gave you 57. But in a full star delta, even if it's a star to star or a delta to delta, you're still going to get 100%. And you must be careful to get all the phase windings the right way around. If you get one reversed in relation to all the others, you are going to get some strange voltages. So that ends another quick little practical on uh, connecting up transformers using both star and delta at the same time.